Hi, I'm Dr. Bruce Campbell with Leahy Hospital and Medical Center. In the information age, patients are bombarded with all sorts of medical information, some of which is true and some of which is not. Here are some common medical myths. Throughout life, many of us are going to experience episodes of depression. The problem is when depression persists. If you're experiencing the sensation of feeling down or hopeless, or no longer enjoying those activities you previously did for a period of two weeks, then that can be a concerning flag. If you've been experiencing these signs, then it's important for you to touch base with your doctor to get appropriate treatment. A lot of people tell me that they self-diagnose on the internet, and I would strongly recommend that you not do that. If you plug in any symptom, such as headache, which is extremely common, you can get very alarming results. I would also avoid trying to diagnose your family members on the internet. You tend to be biased when you're dealing with a loved one, and um, it's really important to get the objective point of view when you see a healthcare professional and get uh, evaluated properly. Recently, there was a study which showed that if patients stop smoking by age 40, they gain many of the years that they lost when they were smoking. On average, current smokers lose about 10 years off their life. Former smokers still have a significant risk of dying sooner than lifetime non-smokers. The take-home message is that you shouldn't smoke. If you are smoking, you want to stop as early as possible. Everyone experiences headaches at some point in their life. It is a very common problem, but there are some symptoms and warning signs that can indicate that there's more than just a headache going on. 90% of headaches will fall into common headache categories such as migraine headaches, tension headaches, cluster type headaches, and these are benign headaches. There are several red flags about headaches, a sudden onset of a headache, or what people call the worst headache of their life. Um, that is a concerning sign, and you should have that evaluated by a doctor. There's a lot of people out there that think sleep uh, is for wimps. And as we study sleep more and more, we're recognizing that the more sleep, the stronger you'll be. Chronic sleep deprivation is associated with an increased risk of heart disease and diabetes, as well as increased likelihood of falling asleep at the wheel. The National Sleep Foundation recommends seven to eight hours of sleep an evening. What are some signs of chronic sleep deprivation? Well, if you're falling asleep within five minutes of going to bed, that's a classic sign. If you're falling asleep at meetings, if you constantly have to hit the snooze button to wake up in the morning, Chronic sleep deprivation is associated with increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. So even the toughest of characters out there need adequate sleep to promote overall health and wellness. So I've been asked by patients, is it normal to feel tired every day and run down? Fatigue can be a symptom of a wide range of medical diagnoses, anything from depression, insomnia, being overweight, heart disease, cancer, anemia, blood disorders. If you find that fatigue is getting worse and interfering with your performance of your daily activities, uh, then you should see a doctor and get routine blood work and a routine physical. As much as we like to blame the weather for a lot of our bad outcomes, cold weather does not cause the cold. The common cold is typically a result of being run down and being exposed to other individuals who have a cold. The best way to avoid a cold is to make sure you're vigilant about washing your hands, particularly when you're exposed to those individuals that are fighting an infection. I've heard from patients that carrying extra weight is fine as long as I remain active, and how much difference can 10 pounds actually make? In fact, 10 pounds can make a very big difference. We're all genetically pre-programmed to determine at what point we would get secondary conditions such as type 2 diabetes or hypertension high cholesterol, heart disease, and uh, we all have different set points. So some of us may uh, trigger type 2 diabetes with just 10 extra pounds. Some of us may require 100 pounds to develop type 2 diabetes. Um, however, 10 pounds makes a big difference. If a type 2 diabetic loses just 5 to 10 percent of their body weight, that can completely reverse the type 2 diabetes. So every pound is important, and I encourage you to try to stay within your ideal body weight.
Many people believe that you have to be knocked out to have a concussion. The truth is, is that most people do not experience loss of consciousness when they have a concussion. The most common symptom is a headache. Patients can also have loss of equilibrium, nausea and vomiting, irritability and depression. Less than 10% of people who have concussions experience loss of consciousness. So if you experience a direct blow to the head or experience a significant whiplash injury, which results in headache or other neurologic symptoms, you should seek medical attention. A lot of patients assume that their medical records are always up to date and that all of their various doctors and specialists communicate with each other regularly. While this would be wonderful in an ideal world, this is often not the case. I would recommend uh, keeping an up-to-date medication list with you um, that would be in your wallet or in your pocketbook and you would bring this to all of your provider appointments. Certainly today with the fast pace of living, stress is here to stay. The key, however, is to make sure that we effectively manage our stress. A little bit of stress can help motivate us to perform well. However, when stress starts to dominate our lives, that can significantly affect our quality of life as well as increase the risk of certain health problems such as heart disease, infection, and sleep disorders. So if you feel like you're losing the battle against stress, it's important to see your physician to get this addressed. Three things that I would like my patients to remember when they leave the office. The first is making sure you're getting adequate sleep so that you're not run down. It's really important to make sure you're putting good healthy things in your body. The fruits and vegetables and protein and whole grains, all of this information can be found online at myplate.gov. Lastly, the third thing I would recommend is exercise. It's uh, very important as a stress reducer. It's also important to keep your lungs and your heart and your systems fit. Often we assume that we are healthy when we feel well. However, many of us may have a lurking problem, so it's important to see the doctor annually to get your blood tests, your blood pressure, to make sure that those things that you may not feel are in order.